Welcome to Donuts Design and Debate, the podcast where we discuss and you get to decide how many highly acclaimed donuts a particular design receives. I'm Matt Robison, the moderator for today's debate, and this time our subject is pocket screws, pocket holes, pocket screws, pocket joinery. Um, that's what we're talking about today. If you're a woodworker, you probably already know what that is. Um, we do have a woodworker on you may have seen him before, a little bit later to debate Aaron about this topic. Um, but uh, first, we're going to talk about the design of, of pocket joinery. Now, first off, I am no woodworker like our guests and a lot of people in our uh, live chat here today. Uh, so I probably will mix up some of the nomenclature or get words wrong or things. So just giving you a heads up right up front. Um, I know nothing of wood, but uh, Let's talk about it. Uh, so what is a pocket screw design? Um, this is a type of joinery that uses screws, uh, typically at a butt joint where two uh, pieces of wood will come together at a right angle or edge to edge. Um, and then a shallow angled hole is drilled with a little kind of a, uh, a lip in there or a shoulder. Uh, woodworkers know this as a pilot hole with counter bore, uh, which I uh, certainly I'm very familiar with, but it's this little ledge of wood on the inside of the hole to hold the uh, the top of the screw in place to get a good connection between that and the other piece of wood. So the screw is sort of inside one piece of wood and then connecting into the other one. Um, in order to draw this, or draw, in order to drill this particularly, uh, you know, exact shallow angle. Uh, usually you have to use a guide or a jig in order to hold it uh, in the right place. Um, the the dr So it comes with like a kind of a special drill bit. Like when you get these things, they come in like a kit from the store. So they'll have, you know, all the specialized screws you need and the little jig and the, the uh, drill bit, which has like a little, what's called a stop collar on it. So it's this, uh, this extra, like a a larger piece of metal that's on there that will, you know, make sure that it only goes in the exact depth that it needs to be, uh, not too shallow or not too deep to make sure that you're getting the optimal um, bite from your screw. Uh, yes, the head of the screw, not the top. Uh, very good call, Brioche. Thank you. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that, uh, that stop collar, make sure that it's at the right depth um, so that you get the, the optimal uh, connection there. When you're, so that's how you drill the holes. When you uh, connect the two pieces of wood together, you, uh, because like they have to be, you know, exactly in the right spot, usually you have to clamp them down in order that you can uh, be drilling it and you don't have to hold it at the same time. So you clamp the two pieces of wood together. Um, and then because it's such a shallow hole, you can imagine if you have like a regular drill, it would be bumping into the piece of wood. So you do need this extra um, like long screwdriver attachment that goes on your drill in order to drill into the hole. So you're going down through that little shallow hole into the other piece of wood. Uh, that's the basic design of them. They're, uh, people like these kind of uh, designs because they're relatively inexpensive. They're applicably, they're applicable to a wide, uh, a wide number of uses in woodworking, um, and they're simpler to cut and align than most joints, according to what I've read online. I have not used any of these. Um, this type of design seems like it's relatively contemporary, and it is. Uh, it was uh, started in 1989, uh, the late 80s. Craig, if you're familiar with these kind of things, you know we couldn't get it through a pocket screws uh, description without talking about Craig. Craig is like the number one uh, brand that makes this kind of pocket joinery. Uh, K-R-E-G and started by a man named Craig, C-R-A-I-G. I was like thinking if to myself, if I could make my, my brand with my name, just like kind of tweaking it a little bit to make it fun but it, it would just be Matt. It's not really a fun thing I can make out of that. So if anybody, if you guys in the chat uh, have a name that would be an interesting brand or a fun brand name, if you just tweak your name a little bit, let us know. If it's cooler than Matt or if it's cooler than Craig, um, you know, you get some, some points. Um, anyways, Craig, 89. He's The story is he's building uh, cabinets for his kitchen and his wife, uh, 
requested that he have the holes hidden on the on the cabinetry. So he built this U-shaped singular hole jig that would, you know, kind of duck that screw on the inside in order that you wouldn't see it. And then obviously when you put it on the cabinet, you know, that the the little oval shaped holes that you get with pocket screws are sort of on the back so you don't see that. Um, this became more popular in the 2000s and now it's relatively well known in the woodworking community for better or worse. Um, some people have strong opinions about these. How they're usually used is for, uh, like we talked about the cabinets, you know, something that the, the holes, which are uh, people talk about as unsightly, not liking that, that kind of oval shaped hole, they'll go on the front of a cabinet or a drawer or like a window or door frame, something that you're not gonna see that, uh, that hole. Um, although some people do use them when they show the hole, if they don't care as much about uh, the aesthetic look of a piece. Um, people, uh, so speaking of those holes, there's also, uh, you can get these little plugs that go in there, um, whether they're made of wood or plastic that can kind of fill that hole in. And some people will like, you know, kind of try to glue it in there and sand it and try to maybe paint over it or some way to cover that hole up. So it's not, um, you don't have to hide it or see it. Um, so we talked about some good stuff about them. Some people, what people say is not so good about them is that they are relatively weak joint. So if you're doing anything that you need more strength out of, usually this is not the type of joiner that you use. People talk about it as kind of like gimmicky or maybe it's too easy. You know, it doesn't take a lot of skill to do. So, um, you can, so there definitely, I'm sure are people doing it, uh, poorly. Um, but, uh, uh, there's a lot of things we can talk about about the design, whether good or bad. And that's why we have uh, an expert on today to talk about it. So uh, we're going to bring on, first of all, Aaron, who's going to be debating, but also our guest. And he is a woodworker and his name is Tyson Karchner. Welcome to the show. There we go. Put these. That goes. There he is. All right. <laughs> Tyson, welcome to the show. Oh, uh, thanks, guys. I, I, it's, um, it's so great to meet you in person. <laughs> I know. That doesn't mean as much probably... as it used to now that everything's virtual. So, but uh, yeah. <laughs> not quite the same ring to it. Um, right. Tyson is on our team at SketchUp. So that's why he's joking about that if you're not familiar. Um, but Tyson is also a woodworker and you have a, a YouTube channel about woodworking. You have some background. I've seen your workshop has a lot of woodworking tools in it and clamps and things. Um, so uh, what's your background in woodworking, Tyson? Well, you know, I, I fell for the myth of, you know, 15, 20 years ago that, hey, it'll, it'll be fun and cheaper to build your own furniture. I, yeah. So I fell for that. Uh, but then I just found that I absolutely loved the, the process regardless of uh, how expensive tools are and how how quickly you actually do in reality build furniture um, which is not fast but I still love it <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, once we got our once we uh, got our first house that garage got took half up and then all the way up with tools and and I've been fighting to keep a garage shop ever since so uh, 15, 20 years of, of just hobbyist amateur woodworking, but uh, I love it. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome to hear. Yeah, I love the uh, the progression. You know, you you the idea to get into a, a hobby like that, and then you once you open the door, you realize how deep and wide the entire you know breadth of everything you can get into is, and you can kind of uh, you know dip your foot in or jump right in. Sounds like you are deep in at this point. I'm deep in in many ways. Whether that means I'm any good at it is subjective, but. No, absolutely no. You've done a lot of great work that I've seen. So um, uh, you've done work in a bunch of different types of joinery, but also today you picked uh, pocket screws to talk about. And uh, why did you pick that kind of joinery as your topic today? Well, you know, I just, I, I'm not a confrontational guy and nobody has opinions on pocket screws. So I figured it would just be a really easy way to go. <laughs> okay, so sarcasm aside, 
uh, uh, honestly, I think this is going to be fun because um, pocket screws are one of those things that some, you know, some folks out there really want to gatekeep and say this has no place, like no metal fasteners or nothing that, uh, you know, was invented in the last hundred years belongs in woodworking or fine woodworking or whatever the terms you want to have. So I thought it would be fun to take like a really... I'm going to stick it to your stance on something as volatile as pocket screws. <laughs> Love it. That's what we need. We need, we need topics that are already hot before they come in here. That's, that's the stuff. That's the good stuff. Hot potato, hot potato. We passing that's it back right. and forth between you two guys today. So um, speaking of, we are going to get into the debate portion of the show. So, um, for those not familiar, the format works. We have opening arguments, then we do the voting. So if you're not um, if you're not in the live chat today, if you're listening later, you got to come live so that you can vote because that's the key to the show. You get to decide um, whether des the design is good or not. So, uh, but first we need to hear the arguments laid out on the table. And because Tyson decided the topic, he also decided which side he was on, and he's for pocket screws being good design. He's the pro side of the argument, so he gets to go first. So Tyson, why don't you give us about five minutes or so on why do you think pocket screws are good design? All right, thanks. Um, so having been doing, you know, having done woodworking, having built furniture and joinery in many ways, I can appreciate that just the journey and if you want to take your time and uh, finally craft joinery, um, that's a that's part of the journey but it doesn't have to be part of the destination one of the things that is so fantastic about pocket screws is how easy you can get into the entry level is so much lower than trying to acquire a table saw and drill press and and a bandsaw and all of, all of these other tools that you need so instead of that you can get started for really low cost of entry all you need is a small jig a drill maybe a circular saw to help you cut some of the wood down. Um, so you can get in easy. That's a huge difference too in the size. Like you're not storing a garage worth of tools. All this stuff fits in a small box that you can break out when you need to. And you can build something on your fifth floor apartment out on the balcony because it's just that easy to use. It's efficient. Again, with the you don't need everything. Pocket screws, by their nature, act as the clamping that you need to assemble your projects. You don't have to have a myriad of clamps or jigs to pull everything together. Pocket screws will do it for you. Um, one of the nice things is we mentioned that you know Craig is the, the big player in this space, but there's actually lots of options out there and the innovations keep coming. So it's kind of, it's pretty awesome that there's more innovations coming in this space. Now, one of the things that I suspect will get brought up is the idea that that's fine. Pocket screws are fine for small projects or small things. They're not appropriate for furniture. Go out there and look for strength tests and you will find again and again that pocket screws are remarkably strong. You can build very strong, very high quality pieces just using pocket screws. Uh, they hold up against some old school joinery, something like a dovetail. They hold up really well. Most of the time it's the wood that fails, not the joint. Um, they're super versatile. If you want to use them with other joinery, you can, you can supplement joinery or you can use them on their own. You can use them in common materials or you can use them with hardwoods. They are uh, extremely versatile. You can celebrate them, you can put them out or they're pretty easy to hide. That's kind of their, their nature. And one of the things I really like about the aspect of pocket screws that it's it doesn't take design away. It's a joint it's a tool you can still design around that so i love that it, it, it doesn't you know it's a simpler process it's easier to come into but it doesn't remove design it's just one of the things that you work with and you can still design and make your own furniture 
And the last thing that I will say to, to lead into this, I wanted to read a quote. Now, um, this is a book, The Lost Carving. David Esterly was a master woodcarver. Um, and he gained some fame and he wrote this book uh, on a process where he went to replenish some hundreds of years old wood carvings that were created by an old renowned, possibly one of the, the most renowned or best English wood carvers named Gibbons. And in replacing some of these lost, they were lost in a fire, some of these lost carvings, he found that he held Gibbons up on this pedestal as this just immaculate, everything was perfect. And in examining his own uh, Gibbons work, he found that like, yeah, a lot of the stuff that was up front was it, perfect. But then the stuff that was behind it was intentionally like, well, it wasn't carved as well, or it wasn't sanded as well, and, and so forth. Like there was a place for all of these things. So towards the end of the book, when he's finishing up, there's something that to me I, that resonates. So I want to read a paragraph here and then relate it to what I think our topic is. So he's talking about leaving after he's been on this project for over a year. He says, as I walked out of the palace for the last time, I was musing on that Will-o'-the-Wisp signature. It was a fitting emblem after all. I'd arrived at Hampton Court thinking that the secrets of Gibbon's carving would be found in Gibbon's. But the deeper I plunged into the work, the more Gibbon's faded from it. In the end, there was no ghost to lay. The golden key to the carving was the carving. I'd had the Orion story wrong. Gibbons wasn't the giant whose shoulder I was riding on. The giant was the act of carving, the profession itself, the making of a carving, the making of anything, making itself. The ancient of days in all of us, the impulse to create. Where I was riding, Gibbons himself had ridden. The idea that furniture, that some of these old traditions have to be retained as themselves is a false notion. The idea of making and making accessible to anybody the, that you know, can make furniture, to me, that's really empowering and pocket screws makes that possible. So I probably went over five minutes. Take it away, Aaron. <laughs> no, that was spectacular. Wow. Hey, strong, uh, powerful words. And uh, the first, I think, guess we've had to quote directly from a book. So bringing the literature in, I love to see that. Um, that was great. Uh, yes, a lot of myriad reasons why it's good design. Aaron, now it's your turn. The opposite side, flip side of the coin. Why are, do you think pocket screws are not good design? All right, let's 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 just let's just get into this. Um, I'm not here to uh, talk up a product or anything. I mean, props to Craig because I mean, like, like, like Matt said, this is there. There are other people who manufacture this, but when you go out and look at this stuff, Craig is the pro top of the list. It's like, you know, searching the word, the term BIM, and finding Autodesk at the top of the list. It's not. It's <laughs> it is a product. It has been marketed, and they did a great job. So good for them for that. But let's talk about the place that this particular product has in this thing we call woodworking. So I know it's gonna be, it's pretty easy to go, oh, woodworking means you have to blah, 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 you, have to, you know, tint your stain with your own blood if you're serious. And that's not, that's not the idea here. Uh, but the idea is if with woodworking comes some beliefs and, and the connection type that you use, it's, it's one of those things where that process is part of the art form, right? Uh, and this is not just about sour grapes from the pros. There's actually real issues behind this too. I could spend a lot of time talking about, if you go look this up, it's pretty easy to find forums and articles and everything else talking about how, oh, well, if why are you even calling yourself woodworker if you can't do a basic dovetail or whatever, that kind of stuff. I'm not even gonna get into that. That's there, but I'm not gonna get into it. I just want to talk about some some real basics here. If you're making a piece of furniture, it, you could make total utilitarian stuff, right? Make just make everything into a box. Just 
boxes of different sizes for tables or seats or you know leave an open side in the box and hey you got some place to store something if we're talking about making furniture uh appearance is important and the fact of the matter is no matter how you try to hide it pocket holes gonna leave a hole so you can get plugs you can put plugs in you can try to find plugs that are the same material so they're gonna come close but you'll always see the evidence of where that's at so you're making your beautiful furniture and immediately pockmarking it with these holes and the other thing i i, I this is this is i i don't know where tyson's getting his stats from guys i'll just be honest i, I don't mean to diss anybody but I was over on the Wood Gears website. Some of you guys have probably seen it. It's a fun, fun website. And they he had an article where he physically broke down, literally broke apart uh, some physical connections, some, some mechanical connections. So he had uh, a pair of two by fours, the same material screwed together with pocket holes, uh, dowels, and then mortise and tenon connections. And basically put weight on until they broke, did a bunch of them, I think five of each and broke them and averaged together. And the Morrison tenon was the strongest. It broke with 222 pounds on it. The second strongest was the dowels at 156 and the loser, I'm making the argument so you know who it is, was the pocket holes. They broke it under 100 pounds. At 99 pounds is the average that it took to break them. So yeah, it's stronger than just gluing two pieces of wood together, but it's not as strong as the alternatives. And dowels, I mean, dowels are completely hidden and not that much more work to do. So that's kind of something to think about when we talk about the strength of the connection. And the other thing to think about with this particular connection is adding glue doesn't necessarily help. It will add a little bit of strength because you have glue between two pieces of wood, but because of the manner of the connection, the screw going in doesn't allow for space for the glue to go in. So any glue that's held in the joint is held between the two pieces and not in the connector like you would get with dowels or a biscuit or something like that. Um, the biggest thing that I, that I wanted to point out is if you're woodworking, if you're calling yourself a woodworker, even if you're not, if you're just trying to make something, make something you're proud of. Don't look for a way to make it quicker. Don't look for a way to make it easier. Look for a way to make it the best thing you can make it. And I believe in your, you, I believe in what you're making, and I believe you can do better than pocket screws. Wow, fighting words. Okay, opposing viewpoints here. Um, who do you agree with? Who knows? Uh, but Tice, I'm sure there's a couple things that Aaron said that uh, probably grind your gears on pocket screws. So is there anything you disagree with him on you want to address? You know, one of the things... Um that I find amusing is uh, Wood Gears is the site of Matthias Wandel. And one of the videos out there that you can find is Matthias showing some of those results where he shows that even with leverage, he has to go out quite a distance to break pocket screws. And that again, it's the wood that fails, not the joint. Uh, so a curious um, reference. Um, it, as we've seen over and over, and I, I, I don't know why glue uh, is, you can add glue and you don't have to add glue. Um, Cause I agree, it, it can supplement a little bit, but it's not necessary. In particular, it's a strong enough joint on its own. Um, the, the glue aspect is fun because it does sort of, again, talk about the way, the reason you know the the idea that dovetails uh, are this high mark of quality or this high mark of something that you've taken your time and you're prideful for dovetails existed because it was a mechanical joint because glue wasn't strong enough finger joints are much stronger than dovetails because modern glue is stronger uh, is it as beautiful not in all cases but dovetails were usually hidden in the past. The idea that we're taking joinery and then hiding it is uh, not a new one and not one to be ashamed of. Uh, it's something that's existed since joinery existed. So no, I, I, I don't buy that uh, if you take pride in yourself, you must uh, abstain from the pocket <laughs> holes. Aaron, your thoughts? <laughs> well, I, man, I, I just, 
I don't want to question your abilities or anything, Tyson. So I won't. <laughs> I don't want to get into anything personal here. Uh, you know, I, I believe that there there is a spectrum. And maybe what we need here is a new term where uh, the concept or the title of woodworker maybe is just set apart a little bit. Maybe we have a woodworker who is somebody who is familiar with the ability or has the ability to make those mechanical connections that require no glue, no metal, no nothing. And then we have, you know, a homemade furniture guy is another title. And homemade furniture guy gets it done. And maybe there's a pocket hole. Maybe there's some duct tape. But it's working. I think maybe that there's just a standard that we're talking about or that comes to mind in my head when I talk about woodworking, and uh, that does does not include pocket holes for my my taste. Wow, duct tape, duct tape in places in wood in duct tape's place in woodworking will be the next uh, debate that we have because uh, hey, that's bold. It. I'm gonna go check wood gears <laughs> and see 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 how many articles he's got on that. <laughs> oh, they gotta have something on there. Um, Cool. So yes, we've heard the uh, debates and now we're going to get into the particular principles that we're voting on. So uh, for the people in the live chat, you'll see the polls pop up at the bottom of the screen. You just click on yes or no for each question. And we're going to start with Tyson going first because you're the pro argument. The question is, why do you think pocket screws are useful design, Tyson? I think there's two main points I would I would adhere to. Um, it's it's kind of funny, and I can I can I I think I can hear the pitchfork mob coming right now. That Aaron just threw such absolute shade at the homemade furniture guy. He's just like throwing a whole bunch of people who uh, you know DIY. He just said all DIY is low quality garbage. That is. <laughs> harsh buddy man but i don't think that has to be the case uh it's usable again simple can be but you have to do pocket screws right to uh and there's there's some learning curve and there's plenty of design so usable yes but secondly the the uh the thing about pocket holes that is phenomenal that you don't get with most other joinery is that you can take it apart. And the ability to have that, you know, versatility, whether you've made a big piece in your shop and then you need to take it downstairs and you can take it into pieces or whether you're moving across state or across country and you wanna take that side table that is held together with pocket screws and instead of taking up all that space, it takes up a third of the space because you can take the legs off and the top off and the skirt it's so usable because it is a semi-permanent joint. Plenty strong, hold up as long as you need it to, but you can take it apart. That is a phenomenal usable trait. Put it together, take it apart. Aaron, why do you think pocket screws are not useful design? Well, look, I mean, useful means something is doing its job, right? And the whole point of a connection is to hold two pieces together. So if you, I mean, I... I I threw the numbers out there. If it is the least strong way, so I'm Tyson's right. Yes, you can put it in there and it's going to take some work to break it. But if it takes the least amount of weight of all the things to break it, why would it be the thing that you would put into the furniture that's going to keep you up off the ground? Why would you put it into your baby crib to hold that crib? This is a baby, you guys. That's not something I want to play with. Keep the baby safe. Vote no. Why do you hate babies? So no, it's not useful. It is supposed to be holding things together. And if it doesn't, it's not a good connection. No, it is not useful. Our group of designers here today, baby haters, according to Aaron. Yes, it's useful. One donut towards pocket screws. Oh, wow. I wasn't expecting to be uh Now I know. I know who I'm dealing that. with. I'm going to change my arguments now because obviously we should just be throwing babies out morally reprehensible <laughs> um not only design wise uh okay so time for some redemption aaron uh this is about aesthetics and why do you think that pocket screws are not aesthetic okay so yeah i mean 
useful. I guess pocket screws are probably easier to put in and there is that temporary connection. Sure, that's great. But when we're talking about aesthetic, the fact of the matter is you have to come in with an odd angled hole. You end up putting an oval, multiple ovals at every connection. So when we're talking about aesthetic appeal, the look of your furniture, the look of what you're making, I, there's not much of a question. Aesthetic appeal, no. Nobody wants pockmarked furniture. Even if you go in and try to fill it, you're still going to see it. It's not good. No aesthetic appeal. Tyson, why is this design is aesthetic? Why do you think? Look, the idea that, again, you have exposed joinery all over is a new idea and a celebrated, like, if what, what's a hound's tooth dovetail if not just for the purposes of, of aesthetics? Pocket joinery makes beautiful furniture. The pocket hole itself, you can cover it up. You can use a... A, you can completely hide it by covering it up and using a similar wood, or you can celebrate it by using a contrasting wood. Your choice. Most of us just use it as it's intended to create a beautiful piece of furniture. It's aesthetic because it is so good at creating most any furniture that you can use. Done. And, yeah. you know, aside from the babies... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, furniture for adults. We don't apparently care about the babies. Furniture. It's beautiful adult furniture. Try to bring in the baby argument at the end. It's not going to help you out. Uh, <laughs> no for aesthetics. No donut for you. Uh, <laughs> okay. I hope each one of these arguments has babies in it at some point. Um, or else, what are we doing here today? Um Next thing we're going to debate about the design is the simplicity. So Tyson, why do you think that pocket screws are simple design? Uh, because again, I, one of the things that's great about using pocket screws is that when you're designing and building your furniture, you're doing it with distances that are, let's call them absolute. When you're spanning a distance between two other members, you know, legs, something else, you're just measuring exactly to those legs. So it's simpler because you're not having to account for an extra amount. Are you adding a integral tenon or uh, you, do you need enough room for some other part of joinery? You don't have to worry about that. You're just going exactly to length. So you simplified what you know your design and how the members are interacting. It's also simple because of the idea I know Typically, I can only add pocket screws on the inside. And whether I'm adding them on the top to attach the top and the sides, they're all just right along the same face. So it is a simpler way to approach it and, uh, you know, but still create beautiful results. All right. He says it's simple. Aaron, why do you think it's not? Well, so here's the thing. Yeah. Is it easier to grab a jig and drill a hole and throw a screw in it? Sure. But I'm gonna challenge that to go, well, add to that the knowledge of how to repair it when it stops working, when it comes loose and your material with the hole in breaks at the end, how do you fill that? How do you reconnect it? Do you throw another pocket hole in? Do you somehow fill and build the board up? And then there's a big question there and it's not as simple because you have to keep in mind it's gonna break. It's not a question of when it's gonna break or if it's gonna break, it's when it's gonna break. And do you have the knowledge to make it work? It's it's a lot less, it's, it's additional work having to, it's not something a baby could do. You have to have that additional knowledge to be able to go in and fix it after breaks, less simple. No, it seems like uh, it is so simple that a baby can do it. And according to Brian, it's not sold in the baby proof your house aisle. So babies are able to take that apart. That's the simplicity we're talking about here today. So, wow, yes, one donut to simplicity. All right, moving on to our next voting topic, which is environmental friendliness. So Aaron, why do you think that pocket screws are not environmentally friendly design? Well, I mean, fact of the matter is the nice thing about wood, wood working is because you're really working with wood. That's really all there is to it. So as soon as you add pocket holes in, you've gone off the wood path. You're adding in metal fasteners. You're purchasing jigs. The jigs are fabricated out of plastic, which I know we all know, not good for the environment. It's never going to break down. Those Craig jigs are going to be here millions of years in the future. 
being excavated by aliens and they're gonna be like Ooh, what's this thing pocket hole it was a sin to use these if you're a woodworker that's what's going to be happening because it's it's non-environmentally friendly materials that have to be created in order to do it as opposed to just putting a couple pieces of wood together alien archaeology who knows tyson why do you think they are environmentally friendly design you know i think those aliens are going to look back and say you know we judged this human race pretty harshly based on how just fanatical they were about creating everything the hardest way. But look at this. See, they had innovation. Maybe we'll give them a few more points on the clever scale than we had previously. Also, look at the beautiful cribs that are still intact <laughs> using this joinery. They really cared for their babies. The other thing, aside from the aliens, which I, I should just stop because that's rock solid. But beyond that, environmentally friendly wood and, and all the wood that we're you know using the vast majority of it is a renewable resource. It is thought of as a crop. It is sown, harvested, and replanted and reharvested. It is renewable. The idea that we're using a renewable resource and using these pocket holes. It also, uh, because again, that lowly homemade furniture guy, because that lowly homemade furniture guy is building their own or that lowly homemade furniture woman is building their own, they're not getting particle board crap from the store that will break and get thrown out. They are building something that will last a lot longer. I believe it, but our audience doesn't. No, it is not environmentally friendly design. All right, this leads us to our fifth and final donut category of voting. Design comes down to, is it honest? So Tyson, tell us about a minute of why do you think pocket screws are honest design? I, I think there's two main reasons. Um, when you examine a piece, when you go into a furniture store and you start looking at it, and sometimes you can tell the joinery, sometimes you can't. I, it doesn't faze me at all that if you look behind a furniture piece and you see a pocket hole, you're like, oh, now I know what that is. That is honest. It's out there. It doesn't matter that in most cases you're trying to put the joinery behind something or hide it. It's still out there. And it, again, is accessible. It's honest because it makes it available for so many people to use. If woodworking and making furniture was accessible only to people who had a garage full of tools, then it's just this elitist, unaccessible, and far less interesting endeavor than an honest one that is actually used and accessible by most anybody. Wow. Okay. Aaron, your thoughts on honesty. All right. Well, I got two things here. One, uh, let's, let's talk about that. I mean, I, I, th I think it's, it's, I'm not going to call it a liar, but I mean, I think it gives the ability for somebody to be a little dishonest and maybe prop themselves up avail able to do something that maybe they can't calling themselves a woodworker because they can use pocket screws to put some MDF together. I don't know if that really counts as being a woodworker. That sounds a little dishonest to me. And the big thing, and we talked about it, both Tyson and I talked about it. Whatever, when you're, when you're done here, you got to hide this hole. It's, I mean, you're literally, you have a connection that you're going to try to hide. If, I mean, if nobody cares, then, then why not just end screw everything? I mean, what's, what's the deal? So instead we got to put these pocket holes in because they're easier to hide. That's why we do it. And hiding is not something that honest people do that's what like the hamburglar does okay so <laughs> if you agree with the hamburglar then go ahead and vote yes <laughs> oh, i probably overplayed that if you like this the hamburglar was the most interesting <laughs> mcdonald's character of all <laughs> so, i've always been a grimace fan purple shirt uh but uh yeah hamburglar that's cool you guys want to support that criminal that that just just liar and criminal and uh hide that's fine all right, our audience is uh, is hoarding burgers or hoarding donuts. The votes are in. Yes, donut for honesty. And so, with 
The votes tallied. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you come to a decision? Yes, we have. Pocket screws deserve three out of five design donuts. And they leave our legacy for the aliens to That's come. That's right. <laughs> future That's generations. Right. Here's how we did it. Future generations of all across the galaxy can enjoy this kind of joinery, apparently. Um, okay, great. Uh, before we say goodbye today, uh, Tyson, if people are interested in finding more of you online, your woodworking stuff that you've done, where can people find you? Uh, for woodworking, I do have a YouTube channel called Geeks Woodshop. Uh, it is a mix of shop jigs, furniture, and just toys. Um, so come on over, and um, otherwise, you'll see me around this SketchUp uh, realm. Cool. Love to see it. Yeah, if you uh, already subscribed to SketchUp, you've probably seen Tyson on the uh, Skill Builders and live streams, but uh, definitely check out his YouTube channel. I dropped the link in the chat here, and it'll be in the show notes and the description. So uh, please subscribe there. He's got great stuff. Um, cool. So on behalf of all of us, uh, thank you to everybody who joined live. If you are listening later, hey, be sure to uh, join that live chat and let your vote be heard. Uh, but we want to say thank you, and uh, hey, have a great day. Thank Take you. Take it easy. Thanks, y'all. This has been a Trimble Media production. Thanks for listening to Donuts Design and Debate. If you're fired up about design and you want to be a guest debater, send us an email at donuts at trimble.com. And hey, take a second to leave a rating and review on your podcast app. We really appreciate it. Thanks again for tuning in and take care.